Most FPV drones have a standard digital camera, like this one with the DJI 04. It works great during the day, but at night these cameras really struggle. There just isn't enough light to get a good quality image. A better option at night is to use a low light infrared camera like this drone with a Rattel Pro. The sensors on these cameras are highly sensitive to near infrared wavelengths so they can create a usable image without that much light. The catch is that they still require some ambient light to function since these cameras are just standard cameras with the infrared filter removed. The best option then is a true thermal camera. These are specialized cameras that are only sensitive to thermal radiation. These cameras are great for flying at night and identifying heat sources like people. The only issue is that they're really expensive. The thermal drone that DJI sells, well, it costs over $7,000. So today I'm gonna try and build my own do-it-yourself thermal drone for under $500. The most unique part is of course the thermal camera. And surprisingly, AliExpress has a decent selection of them for reasonable prices. All of these thermal cameras come out of the same factory in China, and there's four main versions of the camera depending on your budget. At the high end is a 640 pixel resolution module for over $600. In the middle is a 384 pixel resolution module for over $400. And the cheapest is a 256 pixel resolution module for $200. But we do have to watch out for one huge difference between them, and it's not the resolution, it's the field of view. Field of view is how wide the footage looks when it comes out of the camera. One of my favorite cameras, the Rattel 2, it has a massive 165 degree diagonal field of view. This wide view means that I know exactly where I am in the sky and where any obstacles around me are. This low light Rattel Pro that I showed earlier, that has a lower 125 degree field of view, a small but very noticeable difference. It's like when you're playing a video game at one setting and then you change it, it's jarring and it takes a while to get used to. Well, if the jump from 165 degrees to 125 is jarring, well, let's take a look at the field of view of these thermal cameras. The 512 pixel resolution camera, it has a nine millimeter lens, which gives it a 60 degree field of view. That's a lot lower than what I'm used to, but it gets worse. The 384 pixel resolution camera, it has a similar nine millimeter lens. And so a smaller sensor with the same lens means that it has an even narrower 30 degree field of view. And finally, the 256 pixel resolution camera with that same nine millimeter lens, it has an absolutely tiny 20 degree field of view. To simulate what this would look like as a control, here is the 150 degree field of view from a DJI 04 Pro. It's nice and wide. If this was the thermal camera with the 60 degree field of view, we would only be able to see this much. At 30 degrees, we would only be able to see this. And at 20 degrees, we'd only be able to see this much. That isn't very ideal. Here is some real world video that the manufacturer uploaded of each of the three main resolution thermal cameras. The 60 degree field of view is pretty narrow, but it is passable. The 30 degree field of view I'd say is almost unusable. The footage looks so zoomed in that it's impossible to tell where the drone itself is relative to the surroundings. And the 20 degree field of view from the $200 module, it's cheap, but it's not very useful. And this field of view limitation is why I held off on making a thermal drone for so long, because you really had to shell out that $600 to get that 60 degree field of view to get anything remotely usable. But thankfully that manufacturer in China soon realized this limitation. And so they took that $200 module with the nine millimeter lens, and then they put on a much wider four millimeter lens instead. The smaller the focal length of the lens, the wider the picture is, and so this bumps up the field of view from this module from 20 degrees all the way up to 55 degrees. That's almost as good as the $600 module with its 60 degree field of view, and so I think it's time to finally build a budget thermal drone. And so I'm buying this new $200 thermal camera with the 256 pixel resolution and the new wide 4 millimeter lens. All right, so today I'm looking at a real thermal camera. The one I got is the 256 resolution with the four millimeter lens. So hopefully this thing will be actually usable for FPV flight. That's the biggest problem with the uh, nine millimeter lenses is that the field of view is like 10 degrees, which is unflyable. And this is the most uh, expensive item I've ever bought with the least amount of packaging, $200 for this camera. And all we get is a plain cardboard box one cable and the camera itself. I would have liked the 612 resolution cameras, but those cost about a thousand dollars, which is quite a lot of money. So just to start off with, 
I'm going for the 256 resolution camera, and here it is. This thing is able to be powered from 5 to 16 volts, I believe, so kind of like a standard analog camera, and it looks like the pinout here, the 3-pin uh, JST 1.25 pinout is the same as analog camera, so it looks like this is just going to be plug and play. So let's plug that in. But let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, so for now, I have this little uh, a test bed right here. This is just a flight controller and ESC to power it. Here's my uh, Rattel 2 analog camera with a Rush Solo tank. And then I have an analog monitor right here. And let's go ahead and power this guy up. Just make sure the analog video works for now. Yeah, there we go. Get a good clean analog video feed there. And now that we know that's working, I should be able to... Hmm. The flight controller has a JST 1.0 connector, which means that's not going to directly work. What I can do is I can un actually unplug this here. And then I should be able to unplug the camera right here. And then plug this directly in because the pinout is the same, right? Let me double check. Power ground video, power ground video. The pinout is exactly the same, so I can just squeeze this guy in here. Okay, <laughs> I'm pretty excited to see this in action. Let's hope this works. <gasps> I see a feed. I can hear the clicking of the camera. Um, I don't know exactly how thermal cameras work, but there's some kind of like reset mechanism or something and it's mechanical. That is working. There's my hand. Whoa, this is awesome. There's my hand. This is a true thermal camera. Not those near infrared ones. This is actually thermal. Wow. The field of view is definitely not bad, but it is not great either. Well, if I'm going to put this on a drone, I think I'm going to have to have a separate camera to fly with, and then I'll switch to this camera briefly to record. There's the monitor. Oh, this is so awesome. Let me do a close-up of the monitor so you can see it better a bit. Wow. This is awesome. What else can we see? My ring light over there, that's not too hot. I have my studio lights right there. Those are pretty hot, so those show up really bright right there, too. Look at that latency. That's pretty good. I think if you put this on an airplane, you could definitely easily fly it with that. With a drone, this kind of field of view is going to be a little bit difficult, but definitely doable. The camera is getting little toasty, not too bad. So I'm going to shut this off for now. I need to figure out what drone to put this on and how to do it. I'm thinking I need to do one of those dual camera setups. So we have a thermal camera as well as a, a normal analog camera and I switch between them. I may have to switch to the standard analog camera to do like most maneuvers, but once I'm like aimed at something, then I could briefly switch to the thermal camera, see the thermal view, and then switch out of it, I think. Axis Flying sells an off-the-shelf setup like this with a thermal camera and an analog camera mounted in a single 3D printed housing with a camera switcher. The only thing about this, they don't offer the new 4mm wide-angle lens. So I'm going to make my own and I'm going to 3D print and wire up my own custom setup. First up, physically mounting the cameras together. This is what I came up with. It mounts a 19mm analog camera in line with the 20mm wide thermal camera. One little annoying thing with the thermal camera is that the case is 20mm wide, but the screw heads that they use to screw it all together, they actually poke out a little bit wider than the case, so I actually can't mount anything directly flush with it. So to get around that, I'm soft mounting the camera with rubber washers so that the rubbers can kind of form around the screw heads. Next up, it's time for the wiring, and this is what I ended up with after a few revisions. It looks like a mess, but don't worry, I'll explain it in detail along with a wiring diagram. But first, a general overview. Over here on the left are the two cameras. Each of these cameras are connected to analog video recorders. This way I can record both the thermal camera and the normal camera at the same time, instead of just only one. The video feeds then pass into a video switcher. This video switcher lets me choose which video feed I want to see while I am flying. 
This video switcher will then connect to the flight controller of the drone, but for this test on the bench, instead of a flight controller, I have the video switcher connected directly to a video transmitter, along with a servo tester to switch between the different video feeds. Now it's time to get this all onto a drone. I decided to use the drone I built in my $150 autonomous drone build video. This is a budget, old school style drone, but it has a modern flight controller running iNav, which can do more advanced tasks like automated waypoint missions and automatic hovering. It's also pretty large and has a lot of space and expandability for custom projects like this thermal camera. While I could mount this setup to a traditional FPV drone, I wanted something with position hold so that I could safely switch to the thermal camera for long periods of time without worrying about the drone drifting off and crashing. The first thing I'm doing is I'm repeating the bench test, but this time on the drone itself, because I want to make sure that my wiring and software setup is all good before I commit to mounting it to the drone. And in particular, there's a lot of nuance when it comes to which voltages that each component will take. And to talk about this more generally, this is why I break down projects into smaller chunks like this. Instead of just taking the thermal camera and immediately putting it onto an FPV drone, I broke the project down into parts, first testing out the camera, then putting it on the bench and testing the bench setup, and now testing this bench setup with the drone. Doing it this way means that I can get a good understanding of how each component works, rather than throwing it all together and hoping that it's just going to work right from the start. And so here's the final wiring diagram of my setup. You can follow this in your build if you're building this as well. And the main issue I came across with wiring this up were the voltages, since there's a lot of different components here with varying voltage tolerances and outputs. And so while most of the components are flexible in what kind of voltage they'll take, the analog video recorder boards, they'll only accept 5 volts. And so I thought the easy solution would be to just run everything off of 5 volts, but there ended up being a few hiccups along the way. And in particular, the flight controller, the SpeedyB Wing Mini, by default, it outputs the direct battery voltage on the camera pad that would fry the video recorders. So instead, I'm taking 5 volts from the servo pins. Another thing that tripped me up was that I didn't realize the video switcher needed two 5-volt lines. Um, I thought just one from the control line was good enough, but it turns out the video switcher, because it's so voltage tolerant, the inputs and outputs, they're on separate voltage buses, so they both need to be powered from 5 volts via both of the lines. So that's another little thing that I came across. With the wiring finalized, now it's time to install it all onto the drone. I 3D printed another plate that allows me to mount both of the cameras and the video recorders as a single module, and then that entire module gets mounted into the drone. I'm mounting the video switcher to a free spot on the drone, and there we go, that's it. The thermal drone for under $500 is complete. It doesn't exactly look that clean, but it's really affordable. The wiring is getting a little bit out of hand, but as long as the wires aren't loose enough to get caught up in the propellers, then I think it'll be okay. And so now the only thing left is to take it outside and hope that it works. You're going to see three video feeds. The one at the bottom is what I'm seeing when I'm flying. It's the recording from my HD Zero monitor. I'm going to be switching between the thermal view and the regular camera when I'm flying. At the top left is the onboard recording from the thermal camera, and the one at the top right is the onboard recording from the regular camera. These two videos are recorded using those two 5V DVR modules that I installed earlier. I think it's important to have these onboard recordings because it is pretty jarring if you're just looking at the monitor recording with all the field of view changes when I switch between the cameras. For this first flight, I'm flying during the day just so that I can see the drone easier. The thermal camera works just fine during the day as well. The sensor is only sensitive to thermal radiation, so the light from the sun doesn't really affect it. And even though this is the lowest resolution thermal camera, I think it's not too bad. It's definitely usable and I can easily pick out people in cars far out in the distance. 256 pixels doesn't sound like a lot, but for identifying objects, I think it does the job. Now let's switch over to a night flight. This is where the thermal camera can really shine, since it delivers the same quality of video and can pick out heat sources from far away. The tree line is easily visible, with the trees full of water being relatively warm compared to the sky. The bright spots near the trees are the street lights that are hot now that they're turned on, and any passing cars show up nice and bright on the thermals.
and of course people show up very bright and well-defined due to our body heat. The regular camera, which is a Rotel 2, actually isn't doing terrible, but that's mostly because of the ambient light from all of the street lights. And even then, it's starting to get really green. And comparing the thermal camera versus the regular camera, see how easy it is to spot me in the picture. With the regular camera, all of the lights in the background are washing out the picture, making it kind of hard to spot me. But in the thermal view, I stick out like a sore thumb since the thermal camera is just looking at heat and nothing else. That's the big reason to use thermal cameras. It's really easy to spot objects that emit heat. When it comes to actually flying the drone, flying with the thermals alone though is pretty tough. The limited field of view with the thermals makes it hard to judge where the drone is physically in the sky. It would actually be easier to fly in thermals in constant forward flight since I don't actually have to worry about what is to the left or to the right of me, and that's also why these limited field of view cameras actually work pretty well in RC airplane based drones since airplanes always are flying forward and so the limited field of view matters a little bit less. For hovering like this though, you definitely want a drone with GPS position hold. Otherwise the drone could be drifting for many feet and it would be impossible to tell with just the thermal view. So that's how I built a drone with a thermal camera for under $500. If you want to build one yourself, I'll leave links to everything in the description below. This drone definitely isn't as capable as a $7,000 enterprise grade DJI drone, but for $500 I think this thermal capable drone is definitely worth it. For improvements, the next big upgrade would definitely be to put the entire camera module on a brushless gimbal. That would stabilize the footage and let me look around freely, but custom brushless gimbals are pretty involved, so that's for another video. Thanks for watching, and I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're building this drone but want to simplify the wiring, here's some things you can do. Here's my original wiring layout, and the video recording modules really add to the complexity. If you're okay with not recording the video feed separately, you could just get rid of the recorders like this. And secondly, it's possible to get rid of the video switcher entirely because of a lot of flight controllers, including the SpeedyB wing that I'm using, they actually have a built-in camera switcher. On this SpeedyB wing, you could see that there are C1 and C2 camera pads. Those are the two inputs for the two different cameras. You'll just have to set that up in the software. So you could get rid of the external video switcher and just use the one built into the SpeedyB wing. The only reason that I didn't do this is because not all flight controllers have the camera switcher, so I wanted to build mine with an external camera switcher that would work with any flight controller. And finally, one last thing I kind of glossed over, the video transmitter. I'm using a Rush Solo Tank analog video transmitter that just plugs directly into the SpeedyB wing. That's how the video is being sent from the drone to my HD0 monitor.